Hey guys, Zero here again uh, with another unboxing, another Warhammer Wednesday unboxing. Um, and this is not a new model by any means, but it's new in my collection. So, um, recently I picked up a bunch of um, generic Space Marines from a buddy of mine who picked them up in a, like a huge lot for really, really cheap. And they were all old miniatures, but you know some were salvageable, so we managed to salvage a bunch and I got a couple of them. And I added it to the um, Vanguard Space Marine uh, force that I picked up not too long ago. So I decided to, to go and try the um, Imperial Fists Army. Because um, you know, I kind of like the yellow and I had accidentally sprayed some of my um, Space Marine Terminators that I got from the Hero series uh, yellow. I don't I just went outside and I was doing a bunch of priming and I actually got them yellow. And I, don't, I didn't do it on purpose, but... It, it turned out that way. But anyway, um, I picked up a vehicle to go with the small force that I had because I felt like it needed something, but I didn't want to go with a regular tank like the, you know, like the standard stuff. And I wanted to have something different from my son, Space Marine, uh, Space Wolves Army. So like something he didn't have in the, that army I picked up for this one. So I picked up the Warhammer 40K Space Marine Storm Raven. Can you see that there? Um, which is a pretty cool kit. Um, and this is the kit that they actually, Forge World actually turned into the Fire Raptor and the, um, the other one. There's a Storm Eagle. Um, so we'll get this over to the table, pop it open, and take a quick look inside at the parts. And, um, then we'll put it together and then do the Spinner Rooney table so you guys can see it, uh, put together. Alright guys, sit tight. This is the Warhammer 40k uh, Storm Raven gunship for the Space Marines Army, and on the cover you've got the Blood Angel version, so it's nice bright red. It's got the little Blood Angel symbol there, and I believe it does come with a couple little logos. Side panel is the same thing, same artwork. And rear panel we have the Grey Knights. It looks like, yeah. Grey Knights and then the other, the Blood Angels one. It's got the two assault cannons, kind of like the Bow Predator. Um, and there's the other side panel there. And then we've got the top panel. And then of course we have the bottom with all the legal stuff. Legal Games Workshop business. Let's just take this off. It's a pretty big box. Um, one of the bigger ones from the collection. Uh, kind of like the Land Raider. It's almost like a flying Land Raider. Almost. It doesn't have all the LAS cannons, but it's still pretty armed to the teeth. So let's go ahead and get this open. Alright, here we have our first sprue from the box. And this has the main fuselage. And the wings. I like these wings. Um, if I could have gotten a set of these... Um, when I put together my recast of the um, Storm Eagle, I would have got I would have actually put these on there because they're a lot sturdier than the, the resin ones. And there's the back. We'll take a quick look. There's a cockpit there. Alright, here we have the tail, um, some more wing pieces, the uh, canopy, the upper little turret canopy, the Space Marine pilot, um, and some of the weapons, like the assault cannons, LAS cannons, I think you can get plasmas on here, the hurricane bolter pattern, uh, side sponsons, and because this is going to be an Imperial Fist vehicle, I'm going to use a lot of the bolters as much as I can. But I definitely will, I think I'm going to magnetize these so that we can swap these in and out. Whatever can be switched, I'll be magnetizing them so that I can use as much of this kit as possible. Here we've got the wing covers for the turbines. 
That's pretty cool. I mean, it looks like there might be two Space Marines in this. Which makes sense because there's a little gunner hat thing up here. Take a quicker, closer look there. This is a really nice kit. Um, one of the more expensive kits. Uh, not as expensive as like the Land Raider right now because a lot of the prices have gone up for these kits steadily. But it's this was definitely expensive. It was 78 bucks for this one kit. So because of the price you don't see a lot of these in people's armies. Um, which is unfortunate because I believe I really believe that these flyers are really pivotal to like game tactics and stuff like that. Like it, it hasn't been since like what seventh edition that they actually included flyers um, and that they actually started focusing on making flyers for each faction. Um, but but they're definitely valuable. Definitely, there's very few. Most armies have very few options against flyers directly. Unless they have a flyer of themselves or an interceptor or anti-aircraft. Like, for example, the Tyranid army does not have an interceptor and it does not have anti-aircraft. You just have to use your models creatively to, to attack flyers. And here we have some interior, like the seats, interior seats. We've got the heavy bolters. And we've got um, the landing gear, the turbines for the wings door hatches here, the larger turbines for the, the thr main thrusters, door hatches for front and rear, landing pads there, or landing gear, feet. And we've got the instrument consoles here. Let me go take a closer look. So there's there's a pretty good amount of detail for this kit. You know, it's, it's like I said, it's like a flying Land Raider almost, you know. Um, the Nebito the Land Raider is one of the first actual tank kits to actually come with an interior and interior detail. And I mean, a lot of times, a lot of people glue those things together and they don't open up any of the hatches or make the hatches openable or nothing like that because they just don't want to paint all that detail. But I, I mean, I always say paint it, you know, open it up, paint it and make it so that people can see it because, you know, it's, it's a model kit. You might as well do the best you can with it, you know. All right, and here we have some more of the main fuselage, left and right body panels, and then we've got the turbo, the turbine covers for the wings, and here the uh, the engines themselves, and we've got some faction logos. It looks like. We'll flip that over in a second and take a look at that. Yeah, it looks like Blood Angels and uh, uh, Grey Knights primarily, which kind of sucks. If you're going to include that type of stuff, you should include it for at least one of each of the main factions, like Dark Angels, Space Wolves, you know. I mean, I guess you could use these for for generic, but those those are pretty much like Grey Knight symbols there. All right, here we, last but not least, we have the clear canopy pieces. So the two, the front, the main canopy, and then the turret canopy, and then we've got the side little windows there. It's such a, it's a big sprue for such a small little amount of plastic. So this is back before they really started utilizing the space on the sprues, you can tell by the other, the rest of it too. And then we have the clear stem and the standard flight stand, the oval base flight stand. And here is the decal sheet, uh, water slide transfers, and it's only for the Ultramarines, Space Marines Army, which is really funny because the box art and the model kit both come with Blood Angels and Grey Knight emblems, right? Like, you know, hard emblems to put on the ship, but you get Ultramarines sticker sheet. That's... Uh, there you go. I think I have hundreds of Ultramarine sheets too from every other Space Marine kit that they ever made. Alright, here we have the instructions uh, manual. And this is like the old school 
Yeah, this is pretty much old school, right after the 3D CADs were designed. Um, you know, that is what it is. It's not a very complicated kit to put together. It's pretty much everything is mirrored on, on the screws primarily. So you're going to, you know, take this half, put it with that half kind of thing. And then here we have all the different weapon options, which is really cool. And again, I'm going to do my best to mag magnetize them so I can use them for different, you know, against different armies. Because you're not going to use the same weapons against the Tyranid army that you're going to use against the Space Marine army. It's just completely different. And you get some other options here. And sponsor options. And a nice black and white picture, which wasted space, but whatever. Alright, so there we are. That is a quick look at the Warhammer 40k Space Marines Storm Raven gunship.